Hello and welcome to today's recipe. I'm really excited about this recipe. I love it and it's something we eat a lot. Um, and what are we doing? Well, I'm using some of our beautiful parves of fallow deer. Now the parve is the lovely steak off the haunch and that's what I'm using today. And you can see here, we've got these stunning parves and I'm cutting them, they look, they're gorgeous. And these, have, um, these came out of my freezer and all I've done is I've slowly defrosted them in cold water I'm cutting them into beautiful fat chunks like that. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to make a sort of Moroccan, North African inspired dish. I'm going to, I'm going to marinate these beautiful chunks of parve in a sort of yogurt and spice made marinade, and it's going to be seriously tasty. Now I'm using parve, but traditionally I've always used shoulder for this. If you're using a cut like neck or shoulder, 24 hours in the yogurt marinade will break down the toughest meat and make it soft and tender. Really good tip. You don't necessarily have to stew it. So, glass bowl. I'm just going to wash my hands because I've been cutting meat. Okay, I've finished cutting up the venison, giving my hands a really good wash. Now I'm going to make the sort of marinade for it. So what am I going to use? Well, I've got yogurt here, natural yogurt. And I'm going to put a load of yogurt I'm going to use yogurt in this dish for two purposes. Now there's the remains of this morning's yogurt. I have got another pot because I need a bit more than that. And I can pour that one in. Lime zest in there. Yummy. So I'm going to quite a lot of lime juice in there. I'm going to put the juice from two. Again, this will help. help this will all help the tenderization process of the meat. The parves as they are are very soft, so I'm only gonna marinate this for an hour. Um, I don't need to do it any more than that. Next, I could grate some ginger, but I've got some of this amazing ginger juice, which is just literally pure ginger juice. I buy this off the internet and I'm my morning ritual every day is ginger juice, honey and lemon uh, instead of tea or coffee. And I find it's really good for vitality and digestion and everything else. So I'm gonna put a big splash of ginger in there, like so. Let me just dry my hands. That's when you find out if you've got any cuts on your hands. I'm gonna put lurcher drinking from a bowl. <laughs> okay, cumin, ground cumin, a good sprinkling of ground cumin, very, very North African flavor. Here we are, ground cumin, gorgeous. Okay, and I put ground coriander in as well. That was that one. Lovely smells already. Next, I'm gonna put a big sploosh of honey in here. Just works so well. I love this dish to bits. And then for fieriness, I've got a little jar of harissa. Harissa is a sort of North African garlic and chili paste. Cool. Oh, it's fantastic, I love the smell of it. And this is what gives these Kebabs, they're punch. I'm gonna put loads of harissa in because it's gonna be delicious. Jack Russell drinking. What's going on? Jack Russell checking food bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tea time round here. What can I say? It's a doggy household here. Okay, now give that a really good mix. Now add a little bit of seasoning to it. So I'll add some sea salt, and loads and loads of black pepper. It's already smelling absolutely fantastic in there. It is, I can smell it. The limes are amazing. Mm -hmm. One of the favorite dishes of the household. <laughs> Great. Now, I've got my coriander, which is definitely going in this. I've got loads of coriander in the fridge, which is why I'm using it a lot. I'm gonna pull the rubber band off and I'm gonna shave off the stems because I hate wasting them. And I'm gonna throw them in my marinade because they're gonna add buckets of flavor. And then at the end, I will throw loads of chopped leaves all over the kebabs when they come out of the grill. Mm. Here we go. You know you're doing something right when the camera lady is making mm noises <laughs> as you cook. Okay, so this is, there is our mix. That is done, I'm happy. Oh, now if you want it hotter than this, you can always add more chili, you can add more bite, but you know, this is gonna be so, meat all into marinade. There's about eight parves cut up there. So, 
half a leg of fallow deer or thereabouts, maybe a bit more than that. Okay, I also had a couple of venison chops in the fridge and I took the meat off that and added them. So I'm going to cover that, put it in the fridge for an hour. If you're using shoulder, put it in the fridge for overnight and all those connective tissues, tensinias, you name it, will break down and it will be as soft as butter when you push it onto the kebab. So my lovely marinade is mixing up. Now I did actually also add some mint from the garden, which I forgot to put in earlier. Sliced a bit of that up and popped it in. Mint's a lovely flavour in these things. So for my flatbreads, very simple things to make. Self-raising flour, so I'm not using yeast because I don't want them to puff too high. I want them to be like that and spongy. So when we wrap the kebab in them, they're all juicy and tasty. I'm gonna pour um, about that much. 300, 350 grams, I'll take a flyer out like that. That'll do well. I want to do, well actually, maybe I should make more than that because I'm going to do 500 grams or thereabouts. 500 grams, therefore, is a third of a bag of flour. Going bags of flour tend to be one and a half kilos. Okay, 500 grams also <coughs> creates just over a pound in weight. Great, now I want to add some spices to it because I also want these flatbreads to have flavour and spice in them. So I'm going to also add the ground coriander. How much determines uh, how spicy you want your flatbreads and my cumin. And plenty of salt because breads like this need to have, need to be seasoned correctly. Like so, gorgeous. I'm going to add a teaspoon here of baking powder, which I'll estimate. There we go. That's lovely. And pepper. Oh yeah, that's great. And now I'm going to add some coriander because again, this is truly lovely. I'm going to add some leaves this time and I'm going to slice them up and I'm going to cut them quite fine. So here we go, in go the flatbread herbs. So I'll give it a mix. I'm gonna put some water, which is about yeah, yeah, 200 mils of water and yogurt. And I'm gonna mix those together. And I'm gonna make a well, add this in mix it. I want these to be not too sloppy um, but I'm going to knead them on this surface when I'm there. I think I'll have judged that just about right. Not really about the actual quantities, it's more about texture. So you want to get like a, a super thick paste where it'll just about come together. Yeah. That feels good to me. You can see as the flour is incorporating into the yogurt and the water and add a tiny drop more. And that'll do really well. Perfect. Really, really easy. I'll now put flour on my work surface, same flour, and I will tip this out more on top. And I'm gonna knead away. Lovely. And you see, if you start with it a bit sloppy and then you gently knead it, the excess flour in, you're getting a lovely soft ball of dough. So I'm going to knead this for about three minutes, then I'm going to pop it back in the floured bowl, I'm going to cover it with a cloth, and I'm going to put it in a warm spot outside in the sun, and just let it do its thing. And then we'll roll it out in little balls, we'll roll them out into nice flats, sling them in the... Uh, wood fired oven just before the meat comes off the grill. So I've got my lovely little brazier and I'm just grilling some of these beautiful Romano peppers. And these are very sweet red, red and yellow peppers. And I'm grilling them directly onto the coals of this lovely charcoal. And this is what I'm gonna grill the skewers on as well. The wood oven is up already, amazing this machine, is up to 275 Celsius already. Oh yeah, look at that, it's like an inferno in there. So I reckon in about 15 minutes we're ready to eat. 
and this is a lovely messy thing we're going to do. Once those are grilled, I'm going to put them in a plastic bag and then the steam will um, allow the, all that black outer to slough off and we'll be left with gorgeous char grilled cooked peppers, which I'm going to dice and make into a salsa to put on the kebabs. Now I've taken my peppers off the grill, which are nicely blackened, and I put them in a plastic bag for five minutes and then I wash them under the tap and look, you can see all that black skin comes straight off, pulled the end out, washed it all and you've got this beautiful roasted, fire roasted peppers. So going into my salsa, I've got some nice cherry tomatoes, which I found in the fridge, not so many, but that'll do. And everything I'm cooking at the moment, I'm trying to do from things that, you know, most people would have in their store cupboard. There we go. I've got lemons here. Really important because you want that sort of zestiness. Bear in mind, I'm trying to make a sort of North African flatbread here. Princess of darkness, aren't you, Ted? Hey, hey, Ted. So again, lemon, cut, upside, squeeze. Squeeze. That way the pips don't go in the salsa. Gorgeous. That's great. Now the peppers. Let me get my lovely peppers here. Cut them into nice long strips. And uh, I'll line them all up. They smell amazing. <laughs> okay, in go the peppers. Lovely. I'm going to put a spoon of harissa in for that lovely spiciness. And I'm going to get my coriander leaf. So I've made enough salsa here for about a week, but that's okay because I can put it on, I can put it on my eggs in the morning. It'll be delicious. Next, flat leaf parsley. So obviously we've got the juice of three lemons in our salsa. I'm now going to get a nice amount of sea salt because seasoning is important. And loads and loads of pepper. Now lots of olive oil. There we go. I'll give this a good mix. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, keep rolling because we're now going to keep use our flour from earlier, waste not, want what. And I'm going to take my flatbread mix here, the flour, it's looking lovely. It's nice and light. It's going to be terrific. Okay, so there's my flatbread and I'm going to now just tear off nice chunks of flatbread. Now, as long as my flatbreads are, are vaguely round, I'm happy. And I want them big enough to be able to take the contents of our, our skewers. So there's a lovely one there. Loads of flour. Keep going. So um, everything's up to heat. My brazier, my wood oven, they're all nice and hot. And I've got some of these fabulous um, kebab skewers. Now, I bought these ages ago and, uh, and I love them. And they're very Middle Eastern, these big, thick, heavy steel skewers. And because they're square, the meat doesn't slip on them. Also, as they get hot, they cook the meat from the inside. They're really good. So have a look at this. There is our marinated skewer. Beautiful yogurt-based marinated kebabs. And I'm just gonna lay them straight across the charcoal. I much prefer this to putting it on a metal grate because a, the meat won't stick to the grate. I can really control them by turning them regularly like a little rotisserie. And it's just fun, they're delicious. So while they're cooking, we can crack on and do some flatbreads. So, put a bit of flour on my peel, as it's called, my spade, and then sit a flatbread on there into the oven. Now, What'll happen is, is it hits the hot stone, it'll start to puff. I don't know what temperature it is in there. 250 to 300 centigrade, so 650 to 700 Fahrenheit. I reckon they'll take about three minutes each and they'll be gorgeous. <laughs> oh yes, here we go. So I've had this flatbread in, look at that. Gorgeous, it's all soft, it's puffy. Teddy, shut up! Um, it's soft, it's puffy, you can see it's got a bit of colour and it's just going to wrap that kebab like a dream. Okay, a little turn of the kebabs. Um, hello. 
Lovely. I'm going to move these around constantly till I'm happy they've got a real good heat on them. And if I want to just give them a last blast at the end to make sure they're doing, I'll just slide them in the wood-fired oven. That'd be amazing. Now I've just poured a little olive oil over them. We have a look. Look at that venison. Cool. Okay, my skewers. Oh. oh my goodness, they smell special. They look gorgeous. And I love these big skewers that you can that you can just do this with. Because look, I can they're dripping with juices, they're beautiful. I know they're gonna be pink. They're evenly cooked throughout now. That little blast in the oven finished them off. Just look at those. Throw a little handful of seasoning on them. Boom. Okay. I think it's time to assemble. I'm going to have the first one. So, first thing to do, I should let this rest a bit longer, but pff, I'm hungry. I'm going to pull them off into there. So, it's a heck of a dinner. Lovely big juicy pieces of wild venison in there like so. The amazing salsa with the roasted peppers and the harissa. Look at that. <laughs> Let's fold her up. This is messy. I always recommend this is eaten standing up. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness, that's so tasty. Mm. Loads of juice, it's really moist. Luckily I've got a cleaning <laughs> up system. Mm. Heaven, I can't talk. 